Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, because I know we have an international uh, group of people coming to our live coaching demo sessions today, uh, and great to have you here. I'm sure we'll have more coming in as, as, as it begins. My name is Alison Hendren, and I am CEO and founder of Coaching Out of the Box. I've, um, I'm absolutely delighted to be uh, hosting this webinar today. It's one of my favorite webinars that we do because you get to really see real coaching happening live and unrehearsed. I um, got into coaching probably about 20 years ago and little did I know the amazing journey that I have had. Never anticipated that um, I would be the CEO and founder of Coaching Out of the Box never anticipated the amazing clients that I worked with and met over the years, entrepreneurs, business owners, single contributors, professionals, CEOs, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, I, I created Coaching Out of the Box because I, I am amazingly passionate about coaching and still am because I've been fortunate to see what happens when people learn these skills and use them in the work that they do, in their coaching businesses that they create as leaders and managers, as parents uh, and friends, and what a difference it can make. So our time today, and if we could move to slide five, that would be great. Right. So. Without further ado, we want you to see how coaching can happen in a short space of time. It's amazing what, what can happen even in a short space of time. The different styles of coaching, because you're going to see two coaching demonstrations. How coaches you the, use the ICF core coaching competencies, and that's the International Coaching Federation. And you'll hear a little bit more of that in a bit. Also, um, the skills for coaching in the moment. You'll be, you'll be seeing some of that. And also um, we, will, we will have the coaching session and then there will, it will be followed by feedback and discussion so that <clears throat> it can be a great learning experience for you. And there'll be time for Q and A. And also we have our chat uh, box open so you can certainly um, uh, show that. Or you can certainly make your comments in there as well. And so if I could have a uh, coaching uh, defined slide eight, please up on the screen. So I mentioned the International Coaching Federation. This is for some of you, you're, you know all of this, some are new to coaching. This is the largest professional association of coaches in the world in well over for uh, uh, well over 100 countries with well over 40,000 members. They set the standard for coaching. And this is what at Coaching Out of the Box with all the coaching education programs that we deliver, that we are all approved by the International Coaching Federation. And this is the definition of coaching. Um, and this has been honed and worked on over many, many years. And obviously you can all see it, but it's partnering. Partnering is key with clients, customers, colleagues, or employees in a thought provoking and creative process that inspires, inspires them to maximize their personal and professional potential. That is what we adhere to. That's what we, we look at. And we're going to today have two coaching sessions, as I mentioned before, they're gonna be 12 minutes in duration. And then we're also gonna have a debrief of about 10 minutes for each of them so that you can see this. And as I said before, they're real and unrehearsed. And for those people who stay for our entire webinar, it's one hour, you will receive a certificate that gives you one ICF, International Coaching Federation approved core competency credit. So that will be sent out afterwards as will our slides and the recording of this uh, webinar as well. And I'd like to see uh, slide nine put up now. These are, oops, maybe I got that slightly wrong. 
no, I think that it might be missing. It's okay. We'll, we'll not worry. It, you will get it. And it's what it is, is we've talked about, it, it lays out all the ICF competencies that we as coaches, as we as ICF accredited coaches need to um, adhere to. And so you'll, you'll get that afterwards. So as I mentioned, we're going to have two coaching sessions. And first of all, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to introduce to you our two wonderful coach coaches who will be conducting these coaching sessions. And the first person I'd like to introduce, and that would be, and if we could see slide 11, uh, Anne, if Anne could reveal herself on the video, that would be terrific. Um, Anne is a uh, coach facilitator with us at Coaching Out of the Box, and she's also a coaching educator at two other organ coaching education organizations as well. One, the University of Texas, which I used to be involved with too. Um, I didn't realize that, and I missed that initially. And she coaches leaders, visionary leaders, she also um, loves to work with collaborative teams. She's a mentor coach. She's an ICF assessor. So she actually listens to people who are applying to get their uh, ICF credential and they, uh, she's listening to their coaching and observing and providing feedback. And she wants to empower people, as you can see. She wants to empower her clients. And she's also founder of her own coaching business called Because I Matter. And so Anne will be conducting our first coaching demonstration. So thanks, Anne. And is there anything else, Anne, that you would like to say? And I say, and I hope we can see you. <laughs> is um, Anne here? Oh, well, there I, she is. I'm here. Uh, that's pre-COVID and this is post, well, during oh. COVID, how's that? <laughs> okay, is that, it? and that's the additional that you wanna say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, great. Um, also, I'd like to see um, slide 12, which is our other coaching uh, facilitator who's, who's going to be doing the coaching. And this is Sinevi. And Sinevi is a, uh, also uh, an ICF PCC coach. And uh, she is also the member of the Forbes Coaching Council which I think is pretty cool and has been uh, with the ICF since 2012. That's right. You said that. And she has, you have, Sanivi, worked with thousands of leaders at all levels and are passionate about that and has made it your, your life's work in, in really supporting those leaders and reaching their full, full potential, which is fantastic. And the other thing that's very cool about Sanivi from my perspective is that she brings, and I love her passion for this, authenticity and courage. And Sanivi, is there anything else that you wanted to say? No, I am excited to be here. I've got my pink shirt on for anti-bullying day. I see some familiar names in the chat. So looking forward to getting going with this webinar today. Okay, well, we're going to get started shortly and I'm a very, very important that a person that needs to be introduced is our coachee who has been willing to volunteer to be coached. And again, I want to remind everybody that this is live and unrehearsed. So um, Anne is going to be coaching and Julianne Phillips, I'd like to introduce you. And I, again, I really want to acknowledge and thank you so much for being willing to, um, to come and you can, and, and uh, Stephanie, you can, you can just not have the slide showing now. Um, great. And I'm hoping we can see, Ju there she is, Julianne. Thank you so much for being willing to do this. So, uh, Anne, how would you like to be notified of two minutes? Uh, you, you have a total of 12 minutes, but how, how would you like to be notified that you have two minutes left? What would work for you? I'm actually just gonna put my timer on and just go with that if that works for Julianne. Fine, Anne, fine. Okay, Great. okay. And you don't even want us to jump in and tell you that it's that time? Okay, awesome. <laughs> you, you go and we'll just have the, the two of you showing up on the screen now, and um, I'll, I'll go 
I'll stop my video and <laughs> let it begin. Thanks again, Julianne. Oh, and you're Anne. quite welcome. You're okay. Quite welcome. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Julianne. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Anne. Nice to meet it's you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Where, where are you located in the world? From Detroit, Michigan, the Motor City. Oh, well, I'm not too far north of you. I'm just outside of Toronto, so oh. um, we're, we're pretty close. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fabulous Good. city. Always like Toronto. <laughs> it is. And so thank you again for stepping mm -hmm. forward, Julian, because we only have a very short period of time. What is it that would be useful for us to focus on today? All right. So I'm in a um, remodeling my house. Okay. The first floor and the COVID, we're doing massive redecorating. And there's a lot of clutter. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff that I've uh, accumulated over the years. And I think this is a really good time to kind of clean out the clutter. I mean, there's, there's pictures and there's cups from my mother and from my mother-in-law. So, and I'm wondering why is this so important for me to hold on to this? Because it is memories, I guess. But I'd love to have a technique or some uh, a strategy on how I can sort and be clutter-free. So it was interesting on there was some energy with what you had offered, you know, I want to declutter, I want to get rid of. What's making this so important for you right now? Oh, I guess because I'm at a stage of my life, I'm in my rewirement phase. I don't want to say the retirement phase, <laughs> rewirement. And I really want to embrace uh, this new chapter that I'm going to go in coaching. And I want to be able to really uh, spend as much time as I can with the coaching. And I don't want to be bothered with the other stuff that's, that's going around here. So I want to have it just kind of streamlined uh, my house uh, and for my practice, for my office. I heard that. I'm also hearing that there's something important about honoring the memories that, that these articles provide. Is that a fair statement? Oh, and you, you nailed it. That is exactly right. Um, Yes, a lot of things, some memories, some connections. I'll pick up a, a cup that I haven't, like a teacup that I haven't used it in years, but it's a, it's a wonderful memory that I have of my mother, or maybe it's a, a childhood toy that my father had. So it's these connections. I said, I, I can't give this away. So I just have to put it somewhere, <laughs> but it's kind of, it, they're, they're kind of growing these, uh, these <laughs> clusters, if you will. We want to declutter, not become a hoarder, is what I mean. Yeah, right there you go. There you go. Right, right. I can still get to the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so by the time we're finished in the next 10 minutes or so, Julianne, what would you like to have that you don't have now? Okay. I would love to have kind of a system in place that I can look at something. And I guess if it does it bring me joy? Yes. And if it doesn't, I need to let it go. And that's been hard for me to let things go. Um, so I'd love to have some more strategies or some more tips that I could do that to make it quicker. What, what's important about making this quicker? Uh, because I want the house is going to be, <laughs> the first floor will be done in about three months. And I don't want to have the new floor, the new carpeting with the other stuff there. I want to have it streamlined so I can enjoy my house. Okay. I'm hearing that. I am really hearing how important these memories are to you as well. So um, I guess when you said to have a system, what is it that comes to mind that would allow you to honor both expediting the process mm -hmm. while honoring the memories? I've been thinking about maybe um, taking a picture of it, you know, something digital mm -hmm. so I can put it on a flash driver. It wouldn't be the same, but I could look at it. So I wouldn't have to look at the, the physicalness of it. You know, I wouldn't have to have like that teacup, but it would be in, you know, a, a visual. And I'm just, I'm, I just happen to think about that now is that I don't need to, I will not be probably using this teacup, let's say, but I want to have a memory associated with it. So it could be in a computer file when the time comes that I want to make that connection. Cause I, it does have some wonderful memories for me. Okay. What other options come to mind? Uh, you know, there's been so much turmoil 
in the world with COVID, especially with Texas. Oh, the, those people, but I see the, the water coming in on their, their houses. Um, is finding some organization either here or nationally that I'd be able to pack them up and maybe give them to a good home. I mean, they're not, they're serving me as a memory, but I'm thinking, Anne, as we're, we're talking, it may be better served for a new home. So take it out of my home and put it into a new home. That that would that would be maybe a struggle for me, but I think that I, I could manage to do that if I know that there is someone that needs it more than I do. What would that provide you, Jillian? Clutter free. <laughs> it would provide me a way to um, have not all this stuff around, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so one of the things I've learned in the past with the passing my mother and father, I was able, because I was the oldest, I was able to start cleaning out the closets, mm -hmm. start going through the things while they were still there. And I think about for my daughter, um, I really want that to be an easy process for her. So she won't have to look through all this. I know that she'll be grieving when I, you know, die, but I want to have something that, uh, that she'll be grieving for me and not having to go through all of this mm -hmm. stuff. And I haven't, I did not do it with my parents because through the years I would go through that. So that would provide me, um, um, I guess, a, a gift to my daughter that she would not have to go through all, God, did mom want this? Well, what about the dads, you know? So that is another, I think that's an underlining uh, reason why I want to do that. Um, so it will be easy for her. Or my husband, I may know who's, but I hate to think about that, but it's it's part, it's a part of life. And yeah. uh, I know that is part of it. And I want to be able to, to clear that up. So it will be easy for them. The word that's coming up for me as I listen to you is comfort, that you, that you gain some kind of comfort. Does that resonate in any way? Yes, it does. Yeah, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm, I felt very comfortable when I was going through my parents' things that they, they could trust me that I would take care of their things. Right. Okay. And the same thing with Lauren. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I just want to honor time. We've just got about three or four sure. minutes left. Okay. To As you're walking through this, what insights are coming up for you or what awareness is coming up for you? Awareness for me that I don't need to hold on to these things anymore, any physical that I can put them in some kind of a file folder um, digitally that I can still look at them and I can still give them to an, a good home. And the bottom line is if I give them to a good home for a organization or I put them digitally, it'll be less for my loved ones to think about when I pass away. <laughs> Right. Okay. So you had said, you know, I want to have some kind of a system as to how I'm going to go through them. Mm -hmm. Putting them digitally is one thing. You had also mentioned picking things up to see if they bring me joy. It, is that what you're using as your barometer or is there something else that would help you? You know, I've heard about that. I've heard that, you know, people do that. You know, I haven't done it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I've done it for a couple things, but it only worked for like a uh, five minutes. And then I said, oh, you know, I got to fix dinner. So it's not a systematic, consistent way. But I think that would be a very good way to, you know, everything can't bring me joy. <laughs> you know, everything cannot serve a purpose. Right. And I would be able to kind of let it go. Yes. So as you're mentioning that, what's one thing that could be a criteria that you could use in order to help you with this? A memory. It, it needs to be a quick, pretty fast paced memory. If I have to linger and think about it, then I really don't, I don't think I have like the connection. Mm. Um, so it would be a, a quick connection. Uh, maybe you bring a smile to my face. So that would be an, another criteria and that I, that I could use. Lovely. So, Julianne, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Based on where we started our conversation, where are you now in relation to that? Very good. I scale, you know, I'm feeling really good, uh, very comfortable. I didn't know what topic to bring up 
in this session that I felt safe and sharing to the world. Um, but I feel good that I'm able to share this and maybe others have experiencing it too on how do you how do you look at things and how do you give things away that you don't need anymore in life. So I feel very good at peace. And so thank you very much. I really appreciate you discovering, asking those good questions. I feel very, I felt very safe walking with you through this journey. I'm so glad, thank you. Uh, just, just another question, Julianne, because we, you had shared that the fact that renovations are happening, when might you get started with this? Oh, like uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's interesting. So uh, very, very soon, my daughter asked me for a picture. She says, mom, do you have a picture of me reading? And I know I had seen it a about a week ago. And it's like, where is that picture? And I had to go through a box, but yes, yeah, so I need to, I need to work on that because I want like May or June, you know, that's, that's my timeline. I want things to be in its place. I want to streamline all of the pictures and the memories and the cups and all that kind of good stuff. Okay. So when will you actually get started on that? Um, I'm going to say this weekend, I'll say this weekend, because I do have some things with, with work, a uh, proposal, uh, still have class tonight. So I'm going to say Saturday, I will start Saturday afternoon. Lovely. Julianne, we really are at the end of time. Oh, is this a good place for us to stop? Yes, yes, it is. And thank you. It was great. My pleasure. Pleasure to yeah, meet my, you. And again, thank you. It's good to meet you, Anne, as well. Yes, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Anne and Julianne, for that first coaching demonstration. It's always a treat to be able to observe others coaching in action, especially when we have the distinct privilege of having an MCC coach, a master certified coach, the highest level of credential with the International Coach Federation. Um, that's definitely not something that you see every day. And I find you have to really do searches on the internet if you don't have any sort of in your network or inner circle uh, to observe. So thank you, Anne, for allowing us to see you coaching in action. Um, I'm always surprised by what can happen in such a short time frame. So that was 12 minutes and you saw the beginning of the coaching conversation, sort of what happened during and the nice sort of conclusion to the conversation where Julianne is actually committing to some actions with some timeframes attached. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start with you, Julianne, in terms of what was happening in that particular coaching demonstration, what were some of the things that you noticed? Um, I noticed that um, Anne was asking very good questions. I also noticed I felt an instant connection with her mm. instantly. Mm -hmm. um, that, like I said, I felt safe that she was going to take me through this journey. So I felt a connection. Mm -hmm. I noticed the great, powerful coaching questions um, to get at something. I said, you know, this is this going to be a meaty enough of a topic, but it is, you know, I am, I said, let me pick a topic. I'm going to be committed to, and I need to do this soon. <laughs> um, so I did notice the questions, the connection. And I also noticed that she, when she didn't kind of hear that action plan with a date, mm -hmm. she came back to, to it again. So kudos right. to you Anne, for making me commit to, to a date for this Saturday. Yes, absolutely. Holding your feet to the fire because the first time she asked, I noticed there was a little chuckle like, yeah. oh, I should have started this yesterday. Um, and then and really skillfully coming back to sort of revisit and ensure that there was a time frame attached. So I heard you say that you felt comfortable instantly. What was it do you think about Anne's coaching presence that allowed you to feel so safe in this space? <clears throat> She came across as a very caring, compassionate coach. Mm -hmm. um, she was focused on me. Mm -hmm. uh, she wanted to, to really help me along with this and help me to discover what were some true issues. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I think that's demonstrated in terms of the fact that on the surface level in coaching, we talk about coaching to the source, right? Getting mm -hmm. beyond the surface of all of these things. Yes. And literally we're talking about things in this particular coaching <laughs> demonstration <laughs> to get beneath in terms of surfacing what the attachment or the emotion is to that. And 
you could tell the emotion was right there beneath the surface. So for you to be able to feel comfortable, to feel safe, to have this conversation in front of so many people observing, yes. I think it really speaks to um, Anne's presence and how she showed up and how he, she supported you through that coaching. I'm going to come to the chat in just a moment here. Please keep your comments coming through in terms of some of the things you noticed. And we'll take a look at those in just a moment here. But want to come over to you, Anne, in terms of how that was for you. What were some of the skills that you were using as you were working through that coaching demonstration? Well, to Julianne's point, I'm, I'm glad that, that you felt uh, the connection, Julianne, because my, my commitment is always to create that connection first and foremost. Mm -hmm. You're working with another human being. Um, and I hold my clients being very capable, being resourceful, she has the answers. Um, I don't typically have 12 minute sessions. So this was a real stretch for me. Okay. There were things that were coming up for me uh, that I thought, you know, had great possibility mm -hmm. to delve into mm -hmm. the connection of these artifacts with her parents, perhaps, and what the significance of those might be, mm -hmm. and how she could develop some kind of a a system that would honor that yes. as well as what she needs to get done. So um, this was a tremendous opportunity for me as well. There was, there was learning. I know that you can really accomplish a lot in a very short period of time, um, but I would have really liked to hunker down a little <laughs> bit more into what was going on there. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I, I see from your, your laughter, Julianne, I feel like if there had been more time because the emotions are just sitting yes. right there, yeah. there definitely would have been more that would have come oh, out. Right. Um, but probably for the sake of being in a live coaching demonstration in front of- It was good. I'm good. I'm good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, I'm going to come to the chat and just see um, what's showing up here. So I see Gloria is sharing. She was so amazed by the way Anne could pick up important important pieces of what Julianne was saying, and then authentically check in with her and ask questions. It seemed so natural. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what would you say is the core competency, Anne, that allows you to actually put that into practice, to really pick up on all those little pieces and then authentically check in and ask questions um, that really help to connect the dots for Julianne? Uh, coaching presence. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, when we look at the competencies, for me, number one always is ethics. Always, always, mm -hmm. always will be number one because it really helps define our role as coaches mm -hmm. and keeps me within the bounds of being a coach. But second only to that is presence. If I can, not if, when I am completely focused on my client, focused being in the present moment, hearing what it is that Julianne is and is not saying, mm -hmm. then it allows me to listen at a deeper level. So there's a competency. It allows me to ask questions mm -hmm. that could be more powerful. So that's under evoking awareness. Mm -hmm. It allows me to share observations that too under evoking awareness. So there are many different competencies that can be demonstrated, but only when I'm really truly present with my client. Absolutely. And it's actually hard to do um, in this type of virtual environment as well. You know, you've got so many different places to look on your screen. You're not necessarily face to face. So in order to do that, um, really great sort of demonstration of a number of variety of different competencies that Anne was using in her coaching. I'm just going to highlight a few more um, comments here. So I'd invite you, for those of you that just observed, type into the chat, what were some of the things that you learned from watching this coaching demonstration. Um, let's see. So um, somebody here was saying Anne's presence was calm and it honored Julianne's energy. Absolutely. Like just uh, the way I would describe it is stillness, like just really sitting in that space, showing up. And we, we often refer to the term holding space in coaching and just being there and being present and allowing Julianne to express what she needed to express. Um, Renee is saying, I loved how the coach showed up. Her presence was amazing. She listened very actively. She was very intuitive. 
right? So that whole idea of sort of trusting your gut, reading between the lines, um, sensing for those emotions that are surfacing. There were three words that I wrote down, memories, clutter-free and comfort. Um, and to me, those words kind of held a lot of weight in terms of some of those emotions that were coming up. And we're just about out of time here on our debrief. I'm gonna to come to one more comment. Uh, Kathy Scott is saying, I noticed that Anne didn't make an explicit statement about being bound by the ICF ethical guidelines and professional sta uh, standards, but it was clearly implied, nice and subtle approach. So any comments, Anne, around, um, sort of like the difference between explicitly stating or when it's implied? So, you know, I appreciate that being, being brought to uh, the forefront. My, my, uh, it's, I, I, I'm, a, I'm assuming assumption. So let me go. My assumption is that all of that was taken care of before. And I don't have that conversation every time with a client. It's right. what I use at the beginning and perhaps that's something that should have been done today. You know, that's a, that's a really good reminder because I trust Stephanie and Sandra as much as I do and Allison that I figured that all of that had been taken care of and that's why Julianne was here. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Well, thank you again, Anne and Julianne. I think we're probably gonna move on to our next coaching round. So you can sit back and relax and I'll get ready to step on deck here. Yes, and loads of uh, loads of comments, uh, and um, just a, a, a lovely demonstration. Uh, thank you so much, both of you, Julianne and Anne. And now, um, Sinevi, I'd like to introduce you and introduce Robin Bruback, uh, who has very graciously. We had another person scheduled, and they had a death in their family. So, um, at the very last minute, we. We were, we were finding somebody and Robin very graciously agreed to uh, be coached uh, on our webinar today. So thank you so much, Robin. You're welcome. And so I'm gonna be quiet and I'm gonna let the two of you get started. Okay. All right, thanks, Allison. Um, can I just ask for maybe a two minute warning? Um, so if whomever can just whomever on the panel can just pop their camera on and let me know when we've got two minutes. That would be amazing. Thank you. Sinevi, I apologize. I forgot that. No, part. okay. Listen, how, <laughs> how would you like to be reminded? Just pop your camera on in two minutes okay. or when I see your face, okay. I, I will know. That will be the cue. Okay. Done. Awesome. Thanks, Allison. All right. Well, thank you so much, Robin, um, as Allison shared, for stepping in at the last moment and also for being so willing to be vulnerable and to be coached <laughs> in front of this large audience today. So we've got about 12 minutes for this particular coaching demonstration. What's top of mind for you today in terms of what, what you'd like some coaching on? Uh, well, I've been trying to get my act together and start a blog. Um, and I'm, I'm really stuck. Every time I try to start, I feel like it's, it's not what I want. It's not where I want to be. Um, I retired in June after 33 years as being an educator. Um, and so obviously with COVID and all that, like I've been kind of trying to find my niche. So I wrote a lot in my younger years um, and then ended up really coaching more uh, or writing more professionally than I did you know, um, for myself, I guess. Um, so just trying to figure out how to, um, you know, get that started because I feel stuck. Okay. Well, first of all, congratulations on your retirement. 33 years, I think you said. I did. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that is a long time to dedicate yourself and to provide that service. I heard a couple different strands coming through in terms of the topic of starting your own blog. Um, the first thread is sort of just feeling quite stuck around it. Um, the second thread is around really trying to define a niche. Um, and perhaps a third strand that I heard was, it sounds like you've got some experience experience writing professionally, but not for yourself. That's correct. I um, co-authored a book a couple years ago, um, which was a great experience and obviously, you know, wrote to staff and, you know, all that, but um, really I'm looking um, to start a blog and I think that will help me to becoming a better coach 
um, and to helping kind of, you know, build a brand. Okay. So the blog is really serving a purpose or an intent, and the intent is to become a better coach to help build your brand. So what small piece of that would you like to tackle in the next 10 minutes or so? Just trying to find a place to start. I think that's where I'm really struggling. Okay. And in terms of finding a place to start, if at the end of 10 minutes you're walking away and you've got something really valuable you're taking, what might that look like? Um... I, that's a good question. Um, I guess maybe finding a, maybe finding the purpose of the blog, like what, what truly is my intent and what do I truly want to happen? Okay. So tell me a little bit more about the blog. Um, well, so it doesn't really exist. Um, I, I, I began by kind of reflecting about, um, where I've been, um, I think with with COVID and you know not being able to say goodbye, and just that whole kind of um, you know going from being a, an elementary school principal that is constantly moving and, and interacting to kind of nothing, um, I started reflecting on like what what did I want, what did I need, and um, I kind of came to um, defining moments, and so I started scripting out like all of the defining moments that I had. And I think that's kind of what led me actually to coaching. Um, and then I felt like I wanted to start writing about those things because I think um, not only would they be beneficial for other people, but I think they would be beneficial for myself in getting those experiences out and trying to um, find peace maybe with um, where I've been and, and what's happened and, and what I want to do next. Um, obviously I, you know, was relatively young after 33 years and don't want to just sit around and watch TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've gone from this fast paced role where you are leading basically an entire organization and a team and you're on the go to sort of the COVID world where things are still for the most part right. when we're in our homes. I see you're probably in your home right now. Uh, it sounds like you have some ideas for the blog already. You've started doing some work around this idea of defining moments and that there's opportunity there for sharing those with others to really help them maybe mirror or choose some of their own moments, but also it's led you on this path toward coaching. So share with me maybe just one quick example of what a defining moment would look like for you. Um, so I think the, probably the defining moment that I, that I think about most often that is, is in my little journal that I started um, is a student who came back to visit me after um, having made some really poor choices and being incarcerated, um, getting out and then getting back on track and coming to see me and talk about the things that we had experienced together and how some of the things I had said um, while he was in elementary school really resonated with him while he was incarcerated. I apologize for these dings. I would go to turn them off and just can't get to it while it's I'm fine. on I apologize. Um, so, um, you know, I think that is one of those defining moments that um, takes you back to really making sure that when you're having conversations with people that you're intentional and, um, I think that then kind of spurred me into some of the other pieces that I wrote about um, or, you know, jotted notes about. Um, so. Mm -hmm. so as I'm hearing you share that story, that quick little story that you shared in maybe a minute or less, I'm hearing definitely a passion. I'm hearing a tie in to the work that you've done um, in your career up to this point and probably a lead into your purpose as well. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, you said in the beginning, you were feeling really stuck with this blog, but when I'm hearing you talk about defining moments and how you want to show up and who you want to be, it sounds very clear. Where is the disconnect happening? Um, I think every time I try to put my uh, oral story, I guess, into words, I, I feel like I'm not getting to where I need to be with that. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Well, I'm going to ask you, where do you need to be with it? <laughs> Tell me where you, where you feel you need to be with it. I feel, I feel like it's, as I start to write, um, 
I'm not really getting to the emotionality of it. Um, I feel like I lose something in the translation from an oral story to putting it on paper. Oh, okay. So it sounds like then from what you've just shared, when you're speaking or sharing the story, it has a different resonance than when you're translating that into the words on paper or the words on screen. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So if you've written professional articles in the past, um, can you think back to a time where you were able to sort of translate your thoughts and your words into something that really resonated on paper as well as sort of face-to-face -face or verbally? Um, yeah, it was, it was a long time ago, actually, um, pretty earlier in my administrative career where um, I was asked to write about uh, transformation in our school um, in terms of technology. And um, I think at the time I felt so passionate about it that it was really easy to get it out. Mm -hmm. um, and so reflecting on that and trying to figure out how does that connect with the emotion I feel about this piece I think one of the things that keeps coming up is my worry um, about not being able to be successful after having had um, a successful career. I mean, I was, you know, I was talking to a friend, I said I was a big fish in a little pond and now I'm an amoeba in the ocean and, and trying maybe to get past that and thinking perhaps that my writing now is less important because maybe I lack the position. Hmm. So when we started this conversation, you wanted to really surface um, being able to understand why you were stuck in writing and sort of being able to get, get a start on that and to create this brand. And what I've just heard you say is that the way I would describe it, and you tell me if these words fit, there's a limiting belief there around feeling like you're the person to sort of step into this new world and express yourself in this way and in this format, even though you've done it before successfully. Yeah, I would say that that is true. Okay. So having surfaced that, um, what's coming up for you right now? Um, I think, you know, having, having the confidence in my next step um, and in my next, um, career move or personal move or professional move um, that I kind of need to, to work through that. And maybe starting by writing about that might lead me to being able to write about these other things that I have to go back to um, passionately telling my story. Um, the other thing I thought of too, is that maybe instead of trying to start with writing, maybe I start telling the story on, uh, you know, video or tape and then be able to um, translate that into um, a more formal piece of writing. Um, uh, and then going along with that too, I think the writing that I've done recently have been, has been more formatted and less um, uh, emotional or personal. Um, and so maybe trying to find a way to get that to switch, like going back to a little bit more of an emotional approach or something important to me, um, rather than like trying to put it into a format. Okay. Wow. So I just heard you articulate several actions there in your sort of wrap up and exciting actions in terms of some possibilities. So I'm just going to ask you, we've only got, you know, a minute or so left. Can you articulate for me um, what you are going to do? What are those specific actions that are coming to mind for you right now? Um, I think one action is to go back and look at the journal that I have and to start speaking those stories. Um, I think that will really help me to to hear myself say it um, and not get stuck so much between um, knowing it and putting it on paper. So maybe that that hearing the story would will help me to get that on paper a little bit more. Um, and also just to continue to kind of dig into um, where I am, what I want, what I need um, and moving forward in my career path. Awesome. One final question. I know we're out of time. Um, you've articulated your actions beautifully. What will speaking your story or telling your truth do for you? Uh, make me feel like I'm giving back again. Awesome. 
All right. Well, thank you so much, Robin. We are out of time. I appreciate your vulnerability, your willingness to go there. I think we're going to do a quick debrief now. Sorry, that's my turn. <laughs> 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 thank you so much, Sanevi and Robin. Thank you for um, sharing your story. As soon as you said 33 years, and I looked at you and thought, there's no way she doesn't look 33, <laughs> let alone 33. Oh, and and I, so, I so resonated my background's education. So good on you, girl. Thank you for all you've done for 33 years. Um, so there were so many really good comments coming up. Sanevi, I hope you have a chance to look through the chat. There were many, many skills that were demonstrated so beautifully today. Robin, what did you happen to notice for yourself as you were going through this process? Um, one that I was embarrassed that I didn't turn off my iPad and didn't want to get to it while I was being coached. So I apologize for that. That's like so unprofessional. I appreciate everybody's understanding of that. Um, I, you know what? I've been coached publicly before and, and coached before. So I think just going through the process again for me is really... Uh, just a, a great way to remember how important the process is and, and validating um, myself and validating uh, the things that I wanna do and that I have the skill. Sometimes I just need some help to dig into the skill. So. Yeah. There was something you used actually that just so resonated with me when you said I was a big fish in a little pond and now I'm an amoeba in the ocean. What, what was ex expressing yourself in that perspective? What does, what does expressing yourself from that perspective provide you? Um, I'm not sure. I guess just, um, I guess it probably indicates that, you know, I was at the top of my career and, and now have this whole new world open to me that I'm really not sure what to do with. Yeah. And I think what, what really resonated for me is that Sunivi so beautifully picked up on that and then offered this potential of, of a limiting belief and then checked it out with you as mm -hmm. to whether or not there was some truth to that. Yeah. And um, so Sunivi, what is it that you demonstrated so beautifully? And, and as I said, look through the chat because there's lots that's coming up people are noticing. What do you think stood out for you today? I think the ability to sort of get to the source again, right? Like hearing the story underneath the story because I'm hearing from Robin, somebody that is absolutely a professional with experience with amazing stories just in that brief story you shared Robin I was immediately engaged interested um, felt quite passionate I come from a family of teachers and social workers so I love to hear those type of stories they really resonate with me so to hear you sort of come from this space where you know I'm hearing and seeing the sparks of power showing up and then on the flip side um kind of like the weight that's sitting there around being in this weird transition zone and also um, working through and processing some of those emotions in addition to some of those limiting beliefs probably around the next steps. And so it's sort of like taking that um, balanced approach to really honoring both sides of the story and spending enough time in that discovery phase to kind of unpack what's happening there. There was something I thought you demonstrated really nicely, Sanevi, and that was uh, setting the agreement in that you offered Robin the opportunity to share what it was that she wanted or what she thought she wanted from the session. <clears throat> but then you helped her narrow that down. What is it about that process that's so important for us to remember as coaches? I call this the anchor. So I often talk about anchoring that agreement before you dive into the coaching. We talk about this a lot in our classes around how sometimes new coaches will say, aha, this is what you want coaching on. Boom, let's go. And even though we only had 12 minutes, I think it's really important to spend um, a little bit of time right on that front end to get really clear, to narrow the scope, knowing that I've only got 12 minutes, I'm not going to explore every single thing read in detail, I'm going to have Robin identify which piece she wants to work through in the time that we have. Right. 
brilliant. Love the language on that. There's another piece that really stood out for me as well. And that was when you helped Robin see that there could potentially be a disconnect in what it was that, was, that, that she's experiencing here. The stuckness versus the professionalism. What, what, oh, sorry, and that was mine. There you go, Robin, you're not the only one. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. <laughs> this is called the time of COVID. <laughs> um, Sanivi, so if I go back to that, what is it that allowed you to, to actually bring that to the forefront so that your client could see that there potentially was a disconnect in what, what she's experiencing? A lot of what I was doing is using active listening, using paraphrasing, using questions to just sort of have Robin get to that place herself because I'm seeing it, I'm hearing it. But for a lot of times when we're being coached, we don't actually ask ourselves these type of questions or do this level of self-reflection. So that's why it's so helpful to have a coach to sort of help you surface some of those things that are there. And it's not until you say them out loud that you recognize and realize like, oh, that's what's going on. Okay, now I can do something about it. Yeah, the, the ability for a coach to connect the dots that we ourselves as clients may not always see or or are in resistance to seeing, or perhaps in denial of seeing, and our coach is that mirror. And you know how you mirror back. And uh, my my experience of how you did that was very respectful and honoring of your client. You weren't making her wrong. It's Robin. So this is what I'm hearing. What do you think? And so it was lovely. So if I if I do have a look at the the chat, and there's lots and lots of good stuff in here. So please go back and have a look. Um, kudos to Robin for determining the possibility of speaking her stories instead of writing them as a way to start. Yeah. And that was actually offered earlier in the thread here that maybe it's a podcast to start versus a blog. Who's to say? Um, uh, Brenda said she appreciated the question at the end that helped to reaffirm the value of carrying out the actions that had been articulated. So yeah, uh, the word anchor really is, is resonating with a lot of people. Nicely done. Um, Sinevi's questions and presence as well. I particularly liked how Sinevi skillfully kept making Robin focus while at the same time gently and politely acknowledging her feelings connected with this important transition. I really am, I'm hoping that um, our participants are, are really recognizing who's doing the work. You know, so in this particular session, Robin was the one doing the work. Sinevi is asking the questions, providing the reframe or the paraphrasing, and then a question to allow Robin to continue to do the work. The client always does the work. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, so I don't know where we are with time, Sandra. Uh, am, I, am I close? Do you want me to keep going? What would you like me to do here? If we still have a couple minutes, if there's anything of uh, greater value that you want to add, um, you've done a wonderful job. So that's completely your call. Otherwise, we can call Allison back up on deck. Uh, well, yes. So oh, okay. <laughs> and 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 don't don't go off or <laughs> don't uh, take your face away, Anne or or Sinevi, because um, these were. These were outstanding uh, coaching demonstrations. And I think it's really important. And I love the way you both connected to, and Robin and Julianne, such a, so appreciated. There's a few things that I wanted to, to express and notice. We <laughs> had, and I wanna check in with Anne on one of them. And there was a question that we didn't, I mean, there's so many things in the chat. But it was a good, it was one that I think is really important. And it was, uh, came up at the very, very beginning of the coaching demo. Hang on, what if, what, grief, oh, hang on just a minute. Oh, of course I had it here a moment ago and now it's, ah, here we go. It's, I think it's an interesting question uh, for all of us coaches. And there's so much learning with these. Um, this was during uh, the coaching that, that you did, Anne, and uh, somebody asked a question and it said, what if grief over Julianne's, sorry, Julianne's uh, parents dying seems like something to bring up that may be holding her back? Is that something the coach can touch on? Or is that off limits? And I want to remind you that we've got two very powerful 
very, very experienced coaches here. And so I just, I didn't want to leave that one. I wanted to, to touch on that if possible. Anne, do you have any comments about that? Oh, it is absolutely not off limits. <laughs> and that's, uh, I think that's what I was uh, suggesting when yes. uh, Nevi had asked me at the end. It, I, mm, I didn't think it was fair to bring that forward in the time that we had, because that's like, potentially, mm -hmm. I don't know if I am, you know, opening up something that would absolutely warrant more conversation. And for me to open the door and then slam it shut for Julianne would have been terribly unfair in my opinion. And so I didn't go there because that's exactly, and that's what I meant when I, when Sunevi asked me, there was so mm -hmm. much that could have been perhaps mm -hmm. um, looked at. So yes, I, I think that there's something there to honor the client, but it's about asking the question so that she gets to answer that and then see where it goes from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good learning uh, opportunity. I'm really glad you um, mentioned that. I'm curious, Sunevi, what did you think about that? Because this is, this is, we're taking advantage of having these awesome coaches here. I, I sort of joke that every time I coach somebody and I haven't coached somebody in person for a while now because of COVID, I make them cry. Like I always have to have a big <laughs> box of Kleenex on my desk. And it's not that I'm intentionally making people cry. It's just that when something is very real to us, those emotions are right there at the surface and you can see it in people. You can see it in their body language. You can hear it in their words. And I think as coaches, we go to that space with our clients and we help them kind of surface and unleash those emotions to really understand what they mean because emotions are data like anything else they help to inform a conversation but as Anne said appropriate in a 12 minute demo in front of 100 people watching probably not and you know you don't want to mm -hmm. sort of open that door and then slam it shut if we're opening that door we're going to open that door and do it in a really respectful, ethical, supported yeah. way so that yeah. Julianne feels 100% um, supported and capable and able to work through whatever emotions are rising to the surface as she talks about, you know, stuff that is much more mm -hmm. than stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so well said. Such good learning here. And you and, you know, we're getting wonderful comments in the chat about how valuable these coaching demo webinars are. And I know we've got people here attending this class who are brand new coaches. And we've also got some that have been in coaching for quite some time. This is so important. And um, the way that, that, that you were uh, doing this and being professional about it, that you know th these comments that you're making, there's a professionalism about what we bring to coaching and when we bring it and how we how we coach and i'm curious from the attendees i'd love to find out what specifically are you walking away with as a result of our time together today and i'm just looking in the the chat and see lots of comments valuable excellent learning opportunity this is rich and this is um as I said, both um, Anne and Sunevi are extremely experienced coaches. It takes time to develop this and it takes very, very good education. Of course, we would love to educate you for some of you who are new to coaching or want to uh, move forward more so with coaching. And this is an example of the quality and the professionalism and the approach um, that our coach facilitators take. And also um, uh, it, it, it fits with uh, my passion too, because you see the depth that it can go, the life changing uh, shifts and leaps in some cases that can occur because of the coaching. So I just, um, I'm, I'm seeing the comments here. This is fantastic. And I know there's only one minute left. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> I've had this wonderful help in the background. And so again, Julianne and Robin, thank you so much for being willing to jump in 
Sunevi mm -hmm. and Anne, just a joy and a, a pleasure to um, observe this. And Sandra and Stephanie in the background, thank you so much for your support. We continue to wanna make these just an amazing hour that people can spend with us and, and walk away with excellent learning. So thanks everybody and have a great rest of your day or evening or however that is. And, um, and what if everyone had coaching skills? Come on. <laughs> okay, take care everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.